Let's move on to our franchise guy, Mr. Cade yeah. Deuce Cunningham himself, Motorcade. Yes, sir. Um, there were quite a few sound bites, um, quite a few quotes from him I wanted to get to. Did you have any? I want to give you the opportunity first. Is there anything that stood out to you about what Cade had to say? And if so, what was it? Cade is not playing around this year. <laughs> exactly, bro. There were a lot of jokes, there yep. was some laughter, there was some personality. Cade didn't have any of it. And it's not to I say like, that. he's upset or anything. He's not like it just seems like he's all business and locked in like mm -hmm. he was he was kind of short on some answers just to show that he's not like trying to do the fluff thing anymore he's dialed in on what's important um he's talked about how he worked on his floater shout out to kuka hill mm -hmm. um, who asked him about that he said yo what did you work on um this off season to kind of work on your field goal percentage he yeah. said i worked on my floater a lot like instead of you know always trying to you know go for a you know finger roll layup or something he said i worked on my floater to make sure i have that uh chance to get to the free throw line to yeah the field goal percentage up he said he worked on that a lot um he said he's definitely looking at things like all nba and all-star nods yeah. as like individual motivation which i have no problem with i hate players who oh that doesn't mean anything mvp doesn't mean anything shut up yes it does <laughs> it's okay if it does it's exactly. okay to have individual goals i have yes. no problem with that at all yes so yeah Cade being honest about that and just seeing what his demeanor is he was the first player to come out after JB and Trajan Langdon. And it seemed like he is all business and he looks stronger again from last okay. season. So okay. a lot to be excited about from Kay Cunningham for sure coming up. I'm glad you mentioned that, bro, because you mentioned that floater. That tells me that pick and roll is going to be heavy this season. Yes. That's what I got from that. Because you're going to have to make a decision as a defense. Play drop or you got to come up. And if you come up, you're going to have JD available or you're going to have somebody in the corner open. It tells me they're going to be relying heavily on that pick and roll in the half court, which I think they should. It worked last season. They're really looking to get Jalen Duran involved a lot more yeah. in this offense. And that is going to open up things like the float of Kate Cunningham. So I'm really looking to see this team. I want to see how JB is really looking to structure the offense and see how all these moving pieces kind of work together. It's going to be a lot of fun. He was asked about his contract as well. And okay. he did a really good job of assuring that this is where he wanted to be. He didn't really give any hesitation. It didn't really look like he thought about doing anything else. He said, I already knew where I wanted to be. It was just about working out the terms, working out mm -hmm. the figures, because it wasn't a question of where or if. He said, I wanted to be here. He said, I want to complete this process. And for Piston fans who are in these kind of positions and for teams who are in these kind of positions, Go, even going back with the Monty Williams, you can't help but wonder, they really want to be here? Is this right. really what they want to be in their career? And he did a good job of reassuring that this was something that was important to him. His brother Cannon, shout out to Cannon. I remember him doing Coop Hill's know. podcast. And they asked him about that. It's like, yo, like we could finagle you to you know go to Houston and drop down. We could say this. He said, no, I want that responsibility of the number one pick. I want to be that guy. I want that to be my legacy, and I want to live up to it. So right. it doesn't seem like he's running from that at all. And to mm -hmm. me, that makes my respect for K go up so much higher. Same man, like he he didn't. It he, <laughs> wasn't any ambiguity with his answer. No. It was look, I I'll, it was almost like matter of fact, like. I wanted to be here. I always wanted to be here. Yeah. I think it's just such a conversation when you hear when, when you get to extension time. It's just natural, especially when your team is not winning. But exactly. it was just good to hear him kind of say like, and I kind of liked it. Like, it seemed like he was trying to not come off as being like, what do you mean? But he was kind of like, I always wanted to be here. Yes. You know, like it was never even a question. So yeah. he really just wanted to reassure everybody, like you said, that he's not going anywhere anytime soon. So that was that was great to hear. And to see him with this like you said, being so locked in after he signed the contract. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of guys, when they sign a contract, they kind of get relaxed. They have this great period of just relaxing and coasting into the season. He's like, nah, bro, I'm ready to get to it now. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Yeah. He talked about narrative too, uh, as far as just having a fresh start. He said, that's pretty much the narrative yeah. around us. It's just letting the past go, let it be what it was and moving on. I wanted to get to this too. He talked about the Tigers game when they clinched the playoff spot. Yeah. He was there. He said he was in the building, seeing how the stadium was reacting to that, and he got chills. He said, that's what we want to do for our Pistons fans, for the city as far as basketball. We want to bring that same excitement, same joy. So he probably, honestly, and I'm going to let you get to this, he was probably a little bit envious of how the crowd was reacting to the team. He wants that. Mm -hmm. oh, of course, they all do. But him just sitting there, I think he kind of saw what the potential of this city could really do when we're winning as far as supporting the team. You know what I mean? And he wants that. So yeah. that's probably just a little bit of an added boost to him yeah. to say, hey, hey, look, y'all, we can have all this. Yeah. We got to win, though. 
I, and I love that. I'm too. That was that was the hope and the dream of bringing yep. the Pistons down uh, to downtown. So yep. seeing them have that vision, and he's had some great memories in Comerica Park even before yeah. he got drafted. The we want K chance yep. on the crowd. Like <laughs> they have embraced him literally since day one. So mm-hmm. it was cool to see him say that. Yeah, he took the pick on Instagram. You know, he was in the booth and you know checking the game out, and you know, like you said, he got to feel that energy and say you know what we can be a part of this yeah. and I, I forgot who tweeted it shout out to whoever put this post up but when you give the city and the fan base something to cheer for they're gonna be behind you that is just facts we saw mm-hmm. that even with tobias when he talked about when the pistons made the playoffs in 2016 and what the energy was like then when they played against the cavaliers at the palace in auburn hills like that energy is unmatched. When you give this city and you give these fans something to follow, yep. they're going to be here. Even we saw it last season. As many Piston fans who showed up to LCA when they were, you know, going downhill, they didn't have to show up the way that they did. Yeah, you was in the building. That that support is there. As long as the care is there, as long as the effort is there, and as long as they're showing signs of growth, yep, it's going to be that opportunity to get those chills in LCA. And I think they're going on the way to make it happen. Especially inside of an enclosed environment get all the sound waves just bouncing back i'm getting i'm getting musical now but i'm just i enjoy that kind of stuff when i'm in the building so yeah i'm looking forward to it bro um i know i'm, I'm sorry bro you can call me out it's all good i, I own it i'll lean all the way here too it's cool you. It's all good, <laughs> i know it brother yeah a few more things okay bro he talked about the vets right um yeah. first thing i heard out of his mouth about the vets was they can shoot it <laughs> First thing I heard him say, which showed what he was hoping for this offseason, right? Yes. Veterans who can provide space. Yes. So I think he sees now that there is a pathway to success for him now mm-hmm. as far as having the right team around. I think he can look around and see it. And I think that's why he has kind of ingratiated or endeared himself to Trajan. He's the one that made all this possible. Right. As far as putting that team around him. Um, but it feels it feels different this year. It feels different this offseason. A lot of the vets feel it too. Like they all kind of reflected the same thing. As excited as Kate is to work with them, mm-hmm. basically everybody who came up, including the veterans, all talked about Kay Cunningham. Like Fontecchio, one of my favorite quotes from him, he just said, playing with Kay Cunningham makes life so much easier. Right. He said, I didn't know really how great it was going to be, how many kind of looks I was going to get, but mm-hmm. getting on the court with him, just makes my responsibility so much easier. Tobias said the exact same thing. He said, right. yo, this is your opportunity to kind of take that next step and solidify yourself as one of the best guards in the NBA. And I think we can see that. Like, I don't see a reason why Cade can't hover around 10 assists this season with the shooter right. that he has, with the lob threat of JD, um, even the comfort. Like, I talked to Tim Hardaway Jr. as well about the relationship between him and Cade when mm-hmm. Cade reached out due to his shin injury. He yeah. said, you know, he's happy he was able to be a voice and now he can't wait to be his teammate to mm-hmm. kind of help him grow and take those next steps. So, yeah, Cade, to me, I think while it's still not perfect, I think this is, as Beef Stew also said, this is the most yeah. talented team and the best constructed roster they've had since Cade has been here. So easily, I'm super excited to see what that's going to mean for him and his production next season. 100 percent, man. And as far as him just being healthy, you know, his shin is fully healthy. A lot of people I'm going I'm to give him some grace for last season, because when you miss a season, it often takes a season to get back to where you were before the injury. You know what I mean? You don't just come back game speed. You know your conditioning tight and all. no it doesn't work that way you got to play yourself back into shape and the longer you're off the longer it's going to take you to get back to that spot so now that he's had a full off season a full past season to get his legs back under him figuratively right. and literally i think now you're going to see him not second guessing that leg not right. questioning that you know because that's how you can cause other injuries you know what i mean you lean too hard on this side and another side so all that stuff is now in the past and i'm really looking forward to him being 100 percent healthy and now in full condition to really be able to just be himself Definitely. He said that was something he worked on, too. I uh, believe one of the reporters asked about his conditioning and if he worked on that going into next season, because okay. not only is he going to have a lot of respons- responsibility offensively, while Asar is getting ramped back up, that means Cade is going to have to be leaned on a lot defensively as well. So right. he talked about that. He said he's well aware. He said he knows where like his responsibility lies. And it does again, it doesn't sound like he's running from it at all. I, right. I respect that so much about this kid's game, for real. Yeah, yeah, bro. Just to piggyback on the last thing you said um, about him taking some more of that defensive responsibility with Asar potentially being out. Yeah. JB Bickerstaff months ago talked about how he wanted to turn Cade into a two-way player anyway. Right. Right? So this just falls right on. Now, did he say that knowing Asar might be out? Who knows? But either way, 
if this is what he wants him to do, this is a perfect opportunity with Asar being out to kind of get into that role early into the season and kind of build on that when Asar comes back. Exactly. Breaking news to those who don't watch the Pistons and act like Evan Mobley and Scotty Barnes are the only two-way <laughs> players in his class. You're full of you-know-what. Cade is Man. probably the best two-way player in his class, and it's not close. Ain't no Kade probably. Is, yeah, is we know. We know already what his dude's capable of, and I'm super yeah. excited. Even though I don't want him to be leaned on as their top or primary defender just because I don't want him to be in foul trouble like that, mm -hmm. it's still encouraging to know that you can rely on him because he ain't no slouch on off-ball right. or off-ball defense. Cade gives it 100 percent and i think it's going to reflect throughout the team this year